Hi, it's me, Katie. Welcome back to Still the Spotlight. Today I'm doing something kind of different because I'm pretty much taking inspiration from myself. I thought it'd be fun to do a bit of a style evolution looking back at some of my best and also most questionable looks and to spice it up even more i'm going to be trying to kind of recreate but also just taking particular concepts that i used to wear a lot and then styling them how i would wear it today obviously there's some looks that were before i was able to kind of comprehend and choose my own outfits and in that case apparently my mum loved to style me in a denim vest for some reason but i do have to give props because there's definitely a strong cowgirl theme here which apparently really stuck with me because does this not look like something you would expect to see me in today and i was actually going through these photos with mum, and she said she can remember putting me in this outfit with different shoes and i literally threw a tantrum because i needed to wear my pink jellies and then from around preschool onwards i always wanted to choose my own outfits and let me tell you preschool to grade three is like my peak period it only goes downhill from there never really recovered this particular time period where i took these photos on the rocking chair i was obviously heavily influenced by the spice girls we have the animal print and velvet and then the platforms with the puffer vest is giving very baby spice the purple and blue color combo here is everything and clearly was always very indecisive because couldn't decide on just one hat. There was always a lot of pink happening, sometimes too much. Like here, I literally look like a crayon. But actually, spot the shoes because they are giving me like golf or fleur vibes. And I loved wearing either this Barbie t-shirt or the Powerpuff Girls one. So that's the look I wanted to try and recreate. I have such a similar Powerpuff Girls crop top. Princess Polly literally has a whole line dedicated to this at the moment. I matched it up with the checkered pants, which I feel like is a slightly elevated version of the capris I used to wear. And then clearly I have never been one to shy away from an accessory or 10. So just layered those bad boys on. I still see this pop up Barbie top in my dreams. Literally, I've been searching for something so similar on Depop recently, but to no success. Another thing that I wore quite a bit and still stand by to this day is matching sets. It's literally just Lazy Fashion Girl 101. And again, typically they were either in pink or purple. This set you guys probably recognize because I wear it a bunch. Totally looks like something seven year old Katie would have loved. The only difference now is that I'm accessorizing with some darker elements like the chunky boots and the lace up gloves. This set as well, I loved. It had more of a sporty vibe, but the rainbow trim on it, like, I wish I still had stuff like this. She's serving you princess, of course, as always. And this was actually one of my favorite things to wear just around the house, just because it was originally this like huge bridesmaid monstrosity, but my mom turned it into the cutest little princess look for me. This photo is just ridiculous. Like the Barbie bum bag is enough, but the way I'm posing over the scooter, like there's definitely some questionable posing going on. Um, that's what happens when you let like a five-year-old watch America's Next Top Model. There's literally so many trends that are back again today. Like even this, just me making my own jewelry. Very much the hibiscus print and what I believe people are calling like the coconut girl aesthetic. How cute are these pants? I'm obsessed with this look. Also, why do I look so cheeky? I was definitely up to no good that day. But the print totally reminded me of a skirt I thrifted this year. And also the silhouette of it is similar to other skirts I used to wear. I tried to keep the base similar with just a white cami, but added in that extra texture with the lace and then just threw on a bunch of colorful plasticky accessories. Oh my God, this top though, this is something I would wear in a heartbeat today. Also, Sharon and I look like such babies, oh my goodness. Okay, the last trend really coming in strong from these younger years is fairy core. I loved having fairy themed stuff and this crochet bottom dress, like, come on now, the Depop girlies would be going wild for this. And I actually thrifted this crochet dress like many years ago. I think I even have a photo of me wearing it on my Instagram. It's the same color palette, still crocheted. It just doesn't have that beautiful twirling bottom to it. But I thought I'd style it today with kind of a nod to the fairy core stuff that's been going on, but a little bit less grunge because sometimes I do think it takes so many layers to really pull off that aesthetic to a point where it's almost not wearable anymore. So this is something that I could totally see myself actually going out in. Honestly, at this point, I feel like we just stopped taking photos of me. Also keep in mind that we do actually wear school uniform here in Australia. So most of the time we're just wearing that. Even then though, she was giving. First of all, can I just say, I hate being photographed next to someone else because look how ginormous my head looks. I just... I can't stand it, but I have to share this because I wore this yellow top to death. Um, here in Australia, Supre, I feel like 
was that preteen shop that everyone was like excited when they finally reached the age to shop at Supre. And this was one of my first pieces I got from there. I also just have to share this, the stripy toe socks worn with flip flops and jeans. Like, <laughs> what? She's still color coordinated though. So some things truly never change. I must say I have always been a fan of just wearing merch, like from very early on, we got the Spice Girls tee, even going as far as dressing like your comfort character, Hello Big Bird, my anxious friend. And then like grade six, grade seven, grade eight, I wore a lot of wrestling t-shirts. And then in grade eight, there was like this transition period. So grade eight, grade nine, grade 10, I wore a lot of just band t-shirts. You can just barely see it here, but it is an under oath t-shirt. A short stack t-shirt, which I feel like is quite a niche demographic. I loved going to concerts at this time. I went to My Chemical Romance, Simple Plan, Good Charlotte, like all those sorts of groups. So I was definitely wearing like a lot of red and black. I loved this Cheer Up Emo Kid shirt, which everyone had from JJ's, which is kind of like um, Australia's version of Hot Topic. It was kind of that awkward sort of time where I really looked up to the scene kids sort of style, but I was too young to really partake in it or have any money to actually buy and look like these people. So I just did like a really, really bad half-assed version of it. I was just so obnoxious. Like I'm literally wearing a tutu, which I made, for my birthday, I just wore it to the shops, to the movies, you know, had a little wand. And then here again, this was for someone else's birthday. We have the party hats on. And then also just like these stickers or logos from different shops at the mall. Like, why are we doing that? I don't know. Again, what am I doing out in public with cat whiskers and fangs drawn on? I do not know. I so badly wish that I had more photos to share from this time period, but it was kind of like the very end and death of my space. And I just lost everything, um, which is unfortunate because I'm sure there was a hell of a lot of cringe on there. If I was to take inspiration from this sort of time, I'd just take whatever graphic tee I wanted to represent and try and style it more adjacent to a street style sort of inspiration. So going for a baggier fit jean, maybe a bucket hat. And back then, if I wanted to throw on another layer, it probably would have been a leather jacket. But now I think that a puffer jacket or vest would complement my style better. Plus, I feel like it's a less emo sort of way to have the red and black color combo. But you know, at the end of the day, we're wrapping our boy Itachi, which hello, Uchiha's are emos anyway. So we still got a little bit of that mixed in. Now, the weird thing about this time period is that I was able to switch from this more kind of emo influence and then to just like typical Australian girl. And I would just flip flop between the two, pretty much depending on who I had a crush on at the time, probably if we're being honest. So I'd wear some sort of floral dress or something, but most of the time I'd probably just be wearing a plain top and denim shorts, which I feel like denim shorts was the Queensland staple for any high school girl, unless it was like the one month of the year where it was actually cold and you had to break out your skinny jeans, which I feel like is kind of ironic because now you guys rarely ever see me in shorts at all. Maybe high school just scarred me. When I do occasionally style denim shorts now though, I prefer to go for a longer length. And I don't know if I was looking at the earlier cowgirl looks or maybe watching BTS Permission to Dance one too many times, but I decided to carry on a cowboy sort of theme. These boots have been an absolute staple for me for like the last what, three years now? I think they always just add a bit more fun and character to pretty much any look. In high school, I probably would have just worn quite a plain sleeveless top, but now, you know, I cannot go out with at least two layers. So I went for this slightly puff long sleeve top layered underneath this little gingham boob tube. As we come to the end of high school into uni is when I start posting online. So we can pretty much just go through some old Instagram looks of mine, which, wow, I have come a long way. And if you guys have been here from close to the beginning, like props to you. I don't know how you stuck around. No, I'm sorry. I really do not want to be too hard on myself because I know she was just trying her best and just felt like there was a particular mold you had to fit into to be an Australian YouTuber at the time because everyone kind of had a very similar aesthetic i suppose you know i felt like i had to fake tan i had to have long hair extensions and i would have to either style in like a i'm going to the club or i'm going to a festival both of which completely not my sort of personality so i feel like there was a lot that fell under that kind of boho category there was a lot of fringe bell sleeves the little 
Baker Boy cap that everyone had. And oh my goodness, the denim jacket. Put it down, please. You do not have to wear it with every single outfit, but you know, in my defense, I feel like this was a time where I felt like, oh, okay, it feels like it's missing something. I need to add an extra layer. And at the time, that was the only piece within my comfort zone. So it was that every time. But I mean, at least then some of the looks are cute, especially the ones that have that kind of like 2015 Tumblr-esque feel to them. These little button-up skirts, which again, I believe every second girl in Australia owned at the time. Even this, I like the base, it's just that I did not know how to accessorize yet, so it feels lackluster. And also I will say, I used to wear these damn ankle boots all the time, so unflattering and just not chunky enough. I honestly think if you could go back to some of these old outfits and just change to like my chunky lace-up boots, instantly it would be like five times better. Oh, and another shoe pet peeve, apparently all of my problems could have been solved with just a new shoe collection, but why was I wearing these fitted jeans cuffed so you could see the ankle and then not even a chunky sneaker, just like a normal runner. Like, it's just so unflattering. And I even remember at the time not liking it, but just not knowing what it was I had to tweak and hallelujah for more wide legged pants coming into style because that like, change the game for me. Jeans is just one of those things where I feel like nothing should be trendy, not trendy. Everyone just has a particular style that suits them best and we should all just stick to what we love. Let's have a look at some that aren't actually half bad. This one I remember being very proud of and I still stand by it. I love the layering. Obviously today I would definitely over accessorize the hell out of it though. Oh my goodness, look at me here. Who does she think she is at fashion week? I think this was my first and only, or maybe I went to one other, but uh, me and events don't. It's it's not my thing. I do not like social settings at all. I also had that kind of trying to do a 90s grunge look for a little while there. The fishnets, the slip dresses, the flannels. This is another one where I'm really proud of myself. I'm experimenting with a bit of pattern clashing. Of course, again, we could have up to the accessories, but she's getting there. Even though a lot of these looks don't so much resonate with me today, there are quite a few individual pieces that I do still love and in some cases even still have in my wardrobe. For example, this leopard coat, I think I've had it since about 2014 and you guys have probably seen it every single year since then. So for me, this is definitely a staple piece that I can kind of mold to fit into different sort of themes that I'm feeling at the time. I know some people would probably label it too tacky to be a wardrobe essential, but when you have style icons like Fran Fine and Nana, I mean, what did you expect? Originally, I was going to style it today with a plaid skirt, but I think you guys have seen that from me before, so I decided to throw it on with this maxi length skirt instead. And I really think it turned out so cute with the little Mary Janes, as well as being kind of a more modest option too. But yes, I guarantee you can expect to continue to see this coat in future videos. Another example of something that I've held on to since like 2013, 2014, and I was actually influenced to buy this by the Fashion Citizen. If you guys have been on fashion YouTube for a long time, you guys will know who I mean, but it is this pair of D'Andre boots. And I got these at the same time that the Jeffrey Campbell leaders were blowing up everywhere. I myself also had a pair of those, but because they were kind of the face of the trend, people got over them so much quicker and it became more of a fad. So I think that really helped teach me that if there's a trend you really like and you want to partake in, perhaps try not going for the most obvious choice that everyone is already styling. I feel like that's a problem that we're having now with all these micro trends popping up on TikTok. But if you can find an item to partake in the trend that not everyone already owns, it'll definitely help have a longer life in your wardrobe. And another tip that really helped cement this for me and kind of forced me to start playing around with my personal style a bit more, even while still partaking in trends, was to start going thrifting because obviously you're going to be finding more unique pieces and when you're there it's not all laid out for you like if you went on a website and could just buy exactly what the model is wearing, you had to get your own creative juices flowing. So I feel like you really see a big difference in my style in that sort of time 
time period. However, for me, the biggest game changer was when I discovered K-pop. The K-pop stylists are just on another level and it really opened my eyes to the possibilities of just layering and accessorizing until your heart's content. And I have never looked back. So I'd say from about 2018 through till now, my style has been pretty consistent. So that's like a good three and a half years of not looking back and cringing at any of my outfits. I feel like generally speaking, I'm in a really good place where I'm quite happy and content with my style. Obviously, I still like to play around Around, try different things but I almost feel like that is part of my personality as well being indecisive and experimenting with different things and seeing what sticks I also think it's really important I mentioned that you don't just build your dream wardrobe overnight I have been collecting this stuff for years and years and years and when I look back at old photos and I'm like oh she should have accessorized differently or layered more that's all very well and good, but I didn't have the money or the resources at the time to look the way I wanted to look. So definitely just be patient. It takes time to develop your style and build your wardrobe. So yes, I think I'm going to leave it on that note. Hopefully you guys enjoyed having a bit of a trip down memory lane with me. If you guys have been on this channel for quite some time, thank you for sticking with me. Hopefully we have a lot more fun in the future. Bye! <laughs>